Today I'm going to tell you a story. It's a little bit silly, but it is also kind of a highlight of my coffee career. Our story begins in 2004, which feels like a very long time ago now. At that time, I worked for Gaggia back then. I sold little domestic espresso machines in a department store on Oxford Street in London. And we had a special space that was just pure Gaggia. And I had a coffee bar, and I had a two group and a grinder. And the goal was to sell machines by making people a cup of coffee for free in like a porcelain cup. And while they were stuck talking to you, because they couldn't really just wander off, what do you sell them a coffee machine? Then it worked. And occasionally I would get kind of regulars who would just come by, hang out, chat, and drink coffee with me. One of those regulars was a guy called Andy. And I didn't really know who he was, but he was really good conversation and I enjoyed him coming by. And he kept saying he was gonna bring his friend in to buy a coffee machine. And one day he brought his friend, a guy called Darren Brown. Now, at this point, Darren Brown was pretty famous, but to me, I was already a pretty big fanboy. Having worked in a casino, I got kind of interested in um, magic, card tricks, card sharping, card manipulation, all that kind of stuff. Darren Brown is very good at that, and I'd sort of hunted out his uh, video instructional. It's called The Devil's Picture Book. It's really hard to get hold of, I think, or it was back then. And it was kind of three hours of him doing magic tricks and explaining how they worked. And actually a bunch of those magic tricks would show up again in his, in his show uh, as mentalism, but they're ultimately just a card trick. This is not the point. The, the point of, of that was like this guy, Andy, who was actually a co-writer of a bunch of Darren Brown stuff. He's a guy called Andy Nyman, I found out later. This is relevant because in 2007, maybe 2008, I got an email saying, would I like to be on Darren Brown's TV show? I said, yes, even though it was trick or treat. And at the time that was slightly terrifying, but they were like, no, 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 it's just a little segment come by, it'll be fun. We'll do it in like an afternoon. Um, we'd love to have you. It's kind of coffee related. So I said, yes. Now this has been on the internet for quite a long time, but, but no one really found it. But then last week, Darren Brown's channel re-uploaded that video and loads of you have been in touch. And I wanna tell you about that experience because it is not what it seems in the video. What we're gonna see as we watch this video together is not what happened. Let's just, let's just watch the video together. I have my laptop here. I'm ready to go. I am ready to enjoy this masterpiece uh, of television with you. Look, we've talked about how I looked back then in the WBC video where I talked through my routine. Yes, ultimately, I'm sure you have a very witty comment. I know I looked ridiculous. I knew then, but, but I definitely know now. Anyway, let's watch the video. One of the techniques I've been showing Glenn is an extension of what some people refer to as a photographic memory. Now, this is important. All of these shots of old coffee machines, well, the, the filming location for this was the London Coffee Museum. That is now gone. It's now like a, a painters and decorators supplier. But back then, it was owned by a guy called Edward Brahma, and sadly he died. And when he died, the museum and the collection disappeared from public view. It's somewhere, I think, but you can't see it. And it was an incredible collection of old espresso machines, old roasters, old brewers, old coffee cups. Like it was genuinely a very interesting little museum, but also a bit weird and, and a bit creepy at times. Anyway, that's where we filmed this. So that's why there's sort of coffee paraphernalia everywhere. To demonstrate what Glenn will be taking on, I've invited James Hoffman, who was world barista champion as a leading coffee expert, to help me spill the beans. As much as I love a pun, Darren, no, no. Okay. If you can take maybe three big scoops of coffee and pretty much cover the tray. Okay. This is the first thing I need to tell you. This is not the, the, the first trick that he did when I was there. So... This is really important because later on you're gonna see a reaction from me. That reaction was actually to the first trick that he did. The trick that you're seeing on the TV show was the second trick that he attempted. And, and it was the less spectacular of the two. Allow me to explain. The first trick broke my head. Now I was a Darren Brown fan. I was a believer going into this, but after this, just, just blown away. Here's how it worked. It was really simple. I got a handful of coffee beans and I have a good size hand and I threw them onto a tray. 
Darren walked from the other side of the room and asked me to count from 10 to zero. And he stared at this tray of coffee beans for those 10 seconds as I counted it down. He then walked to the other side of the room and picked up a clipboard and began to make markings on it. And what he did in the next 30 seconds was make markings on a clear sheet of like um, plastic, essentially. And he walked back and he laid the sheet over the tray and he had marked the position of every single coffee bean with one mistake. He'd added one extra bean that wasn't there, but he had the location and, and sort of angle of every single bean on that tray down. I was blown away. There's just no way to, to, to trick that. You can't fake it. The only way you can do that in those circumstances with me watching is to remember the position of every bean on that tray. My mind was blown. Like I was, and so they do the trick and then they pull you to the side and then they stick a camera in your face and they ask you questions like, how do you feel? Was that impressive? Do you feel good about that? How did he do it? Could you work it out? And you're just like, I don't know. It was just kind of wild. I don't, yeah, that's amazing. That was really amazing. And I was genuinely stunned, you know, and excited. And then they're like, great, thank you very much. We're gonna do one more trick. Cause you know, we're maybe not so happy with how that first one went and they don't want to fake it. They, they could have gone again and had him get it right. But they were like, eh, it's not perfect, so we'll move on to the next trick, which is the one that you're seeing here. With beans, I'd like to try something with that, so I'll let you do that now. Perfect. Okay, that's absolutely fine, let's leave them as they are. Would you uh, pick one out, pick a bean, any bean? So, if you can mark your bean, that would be perfect. Okay. Uh, if you maybe turn it over, mark the other side of it. And it can be anything you like, a cross, a dot, two dots, your initials, anything you like, but something so you'll definitely recognize that again. Very nice. And now, this is a little bit odd. This isn't exactly how this trick went down. I had picked a bean out initially, and for whatever reason, that bean had been rejected. And what was interesting is that I was sort of coaxed towards picking a different one that I thought was quite, now, I look at coffee beans in maybe a different way to most other people. Maybe I see a little bit more detail in them because I spend a lot of time looking at them. And so so in the in the back of my brain, he gives me this bean to mark and I'm like, mm, I, I feel like I could recognize this bean. I can't remember what it was. It might've been, it wasn't a madre. It wasn't like a, an elephant ear or anything that obvious or distinct, but it was kind of a slightly weird looking coffee bean. Anyway, I mark the bean. We carry on. Cross, cross. Good. While that dries, I now have to memorise the order of the beans that are on the tray. Um, so give me a second to do that. And just keep half an eye on your beans, you know, I'm not going to uh, flick the bean off or anything like that. Uh, that would be a first. Okay. Darren. I mean, he hadn't come out at this point, actually, so I suppose he was being reasonably honest. If you don't get that joke, I'm, I'm not explaining that for you. What I'm doing is taking a series of mental photographs. Oh, okay, I'll just do it. I'm going to face the other way. Okay. You're going to place your bean somewhere on top of the, the beans in the tray. And obviously place it with a cross on the underneath. Okay. And I will look the other way, please keep half an eye on me so you know I'm not going to, I'm not going to look genuinely, I, okay. I can't see. I placed the bean on the tray, and in that moment, I was like, could I do this trick to him? Like, could I could I repeat that trick back to him if, if I felt like I could pick like a bean that I could recognize? And I looked at that tray of beans, and I was like, mm, maybe, but probably not. But maybe. But probably not. Okay. 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 Are you happy I didn't see where you put it? I, yeah. I genuinely didn't. All right. Okay, it's not there. All there. And 
know, looking at this shot, that there's no way that bean looks in any way distinct. And I'm remembering this, what, 13 years later? So, you know, pinch of salt. But still. There are 1,347 beans in that tray. I know. There absolutely are not. And I enjoy that, you know, he flourishes there, but that's nonsense. More than welcome to count them. But I'm only going to give myself one shot at this. And I think that that bean there is your bean. Come in. OK. Turn it over. Very good. Show the camera. I'm impressed. Excellent. You can't really cheat that. So this is my reaction from the first trick that they didn't show, right? Because you could cheat the second trick, actually. There's a bunch of ways you could cheat it. I don't think he did cheat it, but you know, I might have thought he did if I hadn't seen the first trick that broke my little brain. So yeah, absolutely. Pure memory. Impressed. There you go. That's me on Darren Brown. If you're not a Darren Brown fan, you should be. He's fantastic. I would recommend watching any and all of his stuff. It is incredibly enjoyable. I've been a fan for a very long time. And for me, it was a huge deal to be on his TV show and to meet him even. Like I was probably fanboying before the shoot. I was very excited. And it was kind of weird to see Andy, the guy that I'd met when I made coffee in a weird coffee bar inside a department store for free for a couple of years, there as part of that, in that context. It was a good day. It was a super weird day. Now, there's a couple more things I want to talk about today. I, I know that this was, I hope, a, a nice little moment of lightheartedness in amongst a kind of more serious world right now. And we're going to be talking about coffee ongoing. I'm still going to be making videos. Lots of people are going to be making coffee at home, so I want to talk about that. So two things. I want to give away some coffee with every video that I make in the next month or two. So there'll be a link in the description. If you click it, uh, it's a chance to win. I'll, I'll buy coffee for 10 people for every single video. I'll ship it to you. It'll be a bag of coffee from me. I'll pay for it. If you, if you can afford coffee, please buy coffee. Coffee businesses are really struggling. I'll talk about that in a separate video. It is a tough and scary time for the coffee industry. But if you are a service worker, if you're on shift work, if you've been sent home, if you're not able to buy coffee and you wanna drink coffee, enter below, I'll pick 10 people uh, and I'll send them coffee. And I do that for every video for the next two months. So there's a link down below and I'm able to do this because this video has sponsors. Sponsors like Squarespace who sponsor this video. Now, if you're at home and you're working and you're trying to plan for the future, you might be looking at building a website. And if you do, I would recommend getting started with Squarespace. It is incredibly easy to take an idea in your head and turn it into a beautiful website. You can start with one of their templates and fill it with your personality, your ideas, your images, your voice, all of the things that you want to communicate and say. With lots of us stuck at home, maybe it's time to finally get your portfolio up online. Maybe it's time to start publishing the creative writing that you've been doing. Maybe it's time to start a little online business. All of these are simple and possible with Squarespace, and I don't want you to take my word for it. I want you to try it. I want you to go to the link below, sign up for a 14-day trial, and build something. Create something. And at the end of it, when you're ready to launch, use code James Hoffman for a 10% discount on any website or domain. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Again, if you need some coffee, hit that link down below. I'll say thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.